Now, that is the moving image. When television audiences all over the world watched the invasion of Iraq instantly, and it was that footage of the removal of the huge effigy of Saddam that's proved an enduring image. But perhaps Iraq hasn't yet delivered an iconic war photograph. So what is it about a single shot that sums up a conflict or indeed a mood? Don McCullen has been taking photographs more than 50 years and to mark his 75th birthday, the Imperial War Museum North in Manchester is showing a retrospective of the photojournalist's work, including images from Biafra, El Salvador, Northern Ireland and of course Vietnam. We spoke to Don McCullen about his career and you may find some of the images in this film disturbing. The thing about the, the still image is that it, it can hold your attention because with film it's moving, it's fast moving and so therefore there is a difference. And I think um, I've actually seen some of my photographs on television and they have a much more haunting and a much more kind of permanent uh, image uh, and message uh, to give you. Purely from my point of view, they were never taken to do anything other than give you information. You put frames around things when you put them on walls. Um, that doesn't, in my case, you know, mean that they represent art. They don't, in my case. I'd be horrified if someone thought that I was trying to, you know, create a kind of artistic marriage. I constantly, at the time, search my conscience about, you know, is this okay? Do you think it's okay to do this? I meant this impact to be on somebody else, not me. I wanted to, sh to take these pictures and I got close with these pictures. I got as close as you could get. I was looking into their eyes and, 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 and seeking out their approval of my being there. You know, who needs a photographer when you've got a ghastly wound or you're dying or you're starving and, and you know, who needs a photographer? What does photography mean to those people? Absolutely nothing. Quite frankly, um, Many people have come after me. Many people want my, wanted my place and they're quite welcome to it. I will never be able to escape these images here. And of course they, now they're here, you know, and they're being relived and replayed, you know. How can I ever expect to escape them? I'm the one who took them and I'm the one who has to pay the price of it. Ah, um, first of all, we'll deal with whether he's paying uh, the price in a moment, but is he right that moving images don't really allow for a proper, real engagement? I think he probably isn't, actually. No, I think, I think it's more likely that the still images don't, because you're capturing someone in such a tiny moment, and the second afterwards it will have, it will have been different. So there's something perhaps more fake about it. I mean, I, I, I found these, this whole exhibition extremely difficult. Um, McCullen was a friend of my father who was killed in El Salvador in 1989. And I mean, it, it's hard for me to get the distance to talk about it in a normal way. And I don't want to sound mawkish, mm -hmm. but it was very affecting seeing, I don't know, his, his black passport and the reels of film and those telexes from Lord Snowden and these funny typed accreditations that mm -hmm. looked so old fashioned. Because I grew up surrounded by these things that were part of my father's life. Um, and the whole exhibition made me incredibly angry. Partly all those artifacts made him the center of the exhibition. And, you know, a lot of me thinks, oh, bugger off, you know, let's look at the photos. Um, and then also the photos themselves. It, he, there are loads of quotes in the exhibition, and one of them is either I was at war, you know, having a really great time, or I was at home being unhappy. And for someone who was the person left at home, the idea that, that I was the home that would make somebody unhappy is completely devastating. And I, I, I appreciate that probably sounds ridiculously glib, but these photos... I think are a defense against feeling. He says that they express feeling, but I think actually to have a camera in front of your face offloads the feeling on but us. He's it, defended. We're not, you know, no, we're, we're I, forced I, to I participate. Just, I, there's, you, there's quite a lot to say there, but um, I disagree with quite a lot of it. Firstly, I think that photographs are more powerful than the, mm. than the moving image for, for the very fact that they are still. Because if you look at the, if you look at the moving, moving footage of the, um, the American soldier shooting the Korean in, 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 the, in the temple, that's nowhere near as powerful as the still image, which is just captures it, because you don't have time to reflect and think about it. Um, and in terms of, you know, whether... That's what's so artificial but, about but it. But why is that artificial? 
right? That, that's a, that's that's a well, dubious word to use about. Why is well, it? Why is it artificial? It's art to, because you're standing there staring at it in a way that you wouldn't in life. And what he's saying is, this is life. This is real. This, this is, is life as saw. it was in that well, one moment. But the whole idea that that we are bombarded now with images of from mm -hmm. particular war and mm -hmm. disaster as they happen. And do we become inured to it? I mean, I actually find myself being caught quite short by, by the horror of some of these yeah, pictures. I think we do. And it's quite interesting you mentioned that you, um, you found yourself in tears watching Green Zone because I found yeah. myself, oh, this is very familiar footage. What's quite nice, and, and I found it quite a haunting exhibition, partly because it was so dimly lit and you had to walk mm -hmm. in and be absorbed in it, is that you do have to be, you know, you are lost in the world of the photographs and you do ch get a chance to meditate and reflect Mark, on them the way that the you... Mark Allen's personality I, is what you're thinking. What's wrong with that? I thought it was, I I thought it was devastating. Mm -hmm. um, I thought, I, I agree that the experience of, of the Imperial War Museum in Manchester was, was in itself um, uh, an interesting experience. It's quite a bleak building in itself. Um, and, and the experience of looking at these photos I found terribly difficult. I think one of the differences between... Um, uh, war reporting and, um, and, and indeed war photography now and during McCullen's period is you can't really get that close anymore no. and so he made a point of getting very very close to the point of obviously being shot himself and um, he made a point of getting so close that he could capture people's faces and I thought this was the faces in this exhibition were the thing. He is the photographer yeah. of the And it the didn't make a difference, didn't it? Face. It was yeah. photography that made a difference. If he doesn't think it's art, I respectfully disagree. If that's <laughs> not art, I don't know what else. But that's not his primary focus. It's not say. his primary focus, but the first picture that he... The picture that made him famous is a group of gangsters mm -hmm. sitting in this burned-out house. 20, and they're voguing. They're showing off. We're so cool. We're like the Rat Pack. 25 years later, he has a picture of the Christian phalanges mm. holding their submachine yeah. guns. Mm. And it's the same picture. It's the same thing. Young men with guns think they're cool. And that is brilliant. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is absolutely mm -hmm. brilliant. And if you only took those two pictures, game, set, and match, this is great. that's what I find great. so annoying about it. There's nothing cool about it. You know, they're, they're, we're looking at these images and we're taking it all so seriously. You know... He's out there. I, I suppose that's what's missing from all these films and from those pictures is the fun of it. These people are there because it's an absolute riot. You know, my dad used to phone me from the Commodore Hotel in Beirut, you know, holding the phone out the window so we could hear the bombs, you know, with with women in his room probably. And he was having a great time. A lot of them were having, they're having a fantastic time. It doesn't time. make any difference. No, but, but that well, was their release from the horror, because, wasn't it? And that was their release from the horror. Part, it's part of the fun and part of the addiction. But I think then to say that, that, that pictures of men with guns are cool is... But no, no, no. He's not saying it's cool. He's saying he's saying that's the whole yeah. point. Is yeah. that is that that's the, the what he's capturing is this is idiotic. This, this is, is why stupid. people do it. And there's five or six photographs mm. out there that a photographer they don't can look take idiotic. in his life. Those I, images are very beautiful. I, I think those young men do look so, 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 so idiotic. He yeah. is. He is unresolved about his own relationship to his own work. So he's clearly collected all this stuff over the years. Uh, he clearly has his own personal archive that he loves. And yet he hates it too. And there's there's something quite I think one peculiar of the about that's actually interesting about one of the, the, the shell shocked um, yeah. marine is that you have an image, and then next to it you have the post-its which tell you how he wanted it yeah. to be exposed. And what's quite interesting about that is you do realise that these are constructed images. So we talk, we often talk now about photoshopping, etc. Yeah. Yeah. But these aren't these were not just grabbed; these were actually manipulated. I suppose well, that's shape, what I meant. Shaped by war is at the Imperial War Museum North in Manchester until the 13th of June.